We were described as the worst England touring side in the history of any sport. I've never played that drum before. De toi. <laughs> Hello, Dream Team. Welcome along to this week's Le Petit Pod, brought to you by our very good friends at Continental Tires. It is final week and we've got a setting fitting for the occasion. Oh, we saved. You know, they say the they save the best to last. We've definitely saved the best view. It'd be quite nice if we open the roof. This, it's got, this place has got... Uh, if we can describe it, obviously you can see that the Eiffel Tower is in our background, but they also have a roof that retracts. So in the Parisian sun you'll be able to see the whole thing, yeah. which is very nice. Quite yeah. spectacular. You've had hotel rooms looking out onto the Eiffel Tower for most of the tournament. Others <laughs> have been in the further extremities, the uh, arrondissements on the outskirts of Paris. But thank you very much indeed to MasterCard for having us into what is a pretty fabulous setup, I think, if we're going to be honest about it. Have you noticed? Uh, I, I, one of the things I've noticed about this tournament is how they've changed the... You know, you get man of the matches... Uh, they used to be a moment match obviously they're now player of the match yep. and it used to be a bottle of champagne that either got smashed lost drunk sprayed on sprayed the floor around. but Mastercard have done something quite cool with it yeah. they, we've, got a, bit, we've got a little bit behind the scenes um, soundtrack trophy yeah. soundtrack trophy so this is it you got a bottle of champagne back in the day we got straight I had, we to, got get the, I had to get player of the match right. first and foremost did you get the player of the match in a world cup game I very much doubt it. Right. Never lost a World Cup game. I'd just like to point that out again. again. Right. So this is what the player of the match now gets. Listen to this. This is from the France-New Zealand game. Yeah. So this is Gregory Aldritz, player of the match award. France against New Zealand, 8th of September. God, that feels like a lifetime ago. But what MasterCard have done with this, actually, and it's quite, it's quite cool to be able to show this to you. It is a sensory man of the match award, player of the match award, I should say. And it is mixing French music produced by Sirkin, along with broadcast commentary from the game itself, all packaged up into a memento that would sit pretty nicely on anyone's mantelpiece. Yeah, and, and if you think about it, you know, going... Do I listen to the whole thing? <laughs> turn it off again. I like the music, though. Yeah. So, if you think about it, a lot of the time you won't... Do people... Do people ever keep those bottles of champagne? I don't know if they ever do. Whereas this is something that, you know, when you're an old has been, as as we are, are fast on our way to, if you could remember that through a different thing, and it's quite because what the musicians are doing is they are watching the games or they're taking snippets out of the game. There are two songs that they basically work around, and yeah. then and then they add the commentary in as it goes to mix it in so that the player's name then gets into the into the music into the background it is it's pretty very cool, cool. it's yeah. a different it's a completely different way of doing it but it is something that you could play to your kids later down the line and they'll get a sense and i think what they're trying to get is that sensory thing of a feeling of the crowd because there'll be crowd noise in it feeling of what was going on in the games they'll probably be able to put those commentary lines obviously to parts of the match i think it's quite cool yeah and um, well done uh well done uh, mastercard for doing it player of the match award it's gone up a gear or two hasn't it you think yeah. in the 70s yeah, so, it was a pint and a pound yeah, yeah, of yeah. in the uh, 80s and 90s yeah. it was a bottle of champagne and yeah. now you get a suggesting overload yeah it's adjusting a call marking your remarkable performance in a world cup final we're going to come on to who we think might be uh, receiving this uh, come, what will it be, about 11, 11.05 on Saturday evening. But let's get straight into the team news ahead of the Rugby World Cup final. South Africa, I'm sure you've all seen it by now. Uh, they've gone with a big old bomb squad on the bench. The, brave. It, it's a brave. We'll come on to that in a moment. But the interesting news is that Pollard starts uh, at 10. No place, therefore, for Marnie Libbock. Uh, Bongi Mambi starts. That's in the 23. That's, not... that's in the 23. That's not even on the bench. Bongi Mambi starts. And we're going to come on to that as well because... It is a real shame that we're going into a Rugby World Cup final with all sorts of uh, noise and talk and um, controversy off the field. Uh, the bench, as we mentioned, is a 7-1 split, which is the same as the Twickenham game. And it's Cheslin Colby who will be covering nine from the bench. Uh, Willemsa will cover 10. So is it fair to say that Rassi has bet the house on this? It's a hell of a, a selection in a World Cup final against their greatest foe. Well, going from a week ago, him picking the same team for the first time in four years, he's dialed it up a notch again, hasn't he? So, you know, and looking back to the warm-up game, 7-1, uh, obviously, initial thoughts really hard on Lil Bok, um, because, you know, having been uh, a sort of 
strong feature for the for the whole of the World Cup to then have to miss out. Uh, but Razzie makes those big calls. Look, I actually, you know, I think Razzie's been pretty a great this this World Cup. Uh, there's a there's a couple of bits and pieces I pick up through his history which I haven't liked, but I think um, we've talked about it before. South Africa are unapologetically South Africa. It is a team to get the job done physically. Um, you know, I think there's going to be nerves are jangling. I know that they all talk about Quagga Smith and his ability to play sevens and he could fit in somewhere in a back line and you could hide him away. Um, but still, uh, it's very, very brave to pick four scrum halves in your actual squad and then only have one in the final <laughs> without any cover. He's just rewriting the, 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 the I was going to say rule, but the law book as he goes, isn't he? But yeah, and I like that. You know, people moan about it. I don't get why people moan about it. This, it's invention. You know, I've, I've said to you in the past, I think there should be more people allowed on the bench because you normally take more to the game for warm-ups. So you'll take, you could take 10, 12 players in total could dress match day, warm up, and then, you know, five go and get changed. But I have I've said to you in the past, I quite like the idea of letting all 12 of them stay dressed, but you're only allowed to make five subs. Yeah. So you can actually make tactical like changes. So Pick this would, from so, so this would be my exa exact uh, example is, is if we had 12, he would be able to have 12 on the bench and still have another scrum half, another fly half, but ultimately he could use his seven four, uh, his you know his changes could all be forwards in the end if he wanted to. Yeah, but I think it's quite nice and for player welfare if you have the ability to make some changes in other specialist positions. But you've got to give him credit; he he puts his testicles on the line, and he's got to live and he'll live and die by this decision. Yeah. If it's a wet weather game and it's tight, and they win, and they take uh, uh, they take um, a physical <laughs> stranglehold on the game they'll rave about it. Right. If Faf goes down in the first minute and Cheslin, who, you know, was told his whole life he'd only be a nine, yeah. steps in at nine and they lose the game, he'll be crucified, you know, by the nature of it, he'll probably be crucified for it, which I don't think he should be, but, you know, that's the nature of the beast at the moment. Um, if you don't, if you don't swim the same way as everyone else, you, you get lambasted for it. Is it possible to swim the same way as everyone else? The world is 50-50, isn't it? Where, where, whichever way you're swimming, you've got half the world well, saying okay. you're doing it wrong. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. And normally the people who think they're doing it right are the ones that shout the loudest. Do you think this box side have enough to reinflate, re-energise and go again? One that point is, win over France, one point win over England. They look knackered at the end of the semi-final. That is also a reason why I think they might have gone this way. Just slow it to, down, from well, the ball, slow batter it them. down and get it back to where they want to play the game I think for 70 minutes England played an outstanding game plan um, really took the game by the scruff of the neck but you know just panicked a little bit in those last mm. uh, six seven minutes and a couple of decisions that I wish they, they probably wish they could take back but that's what you know we say after it that's what the box do that's the ability this team said it after they find a way to do it does everyone agree with it no, you know, there's a discussion about who wants to watch scrums and let's take it out. And obviously Smitty and Shimmy discussed this on on their pod the other day. And I agree, rugby is a, a game for everyone. So you can't get rid of scrums. Yeah. But there is also a way you can find to play with scrum where it doesn't all come back down yeah. to it. But this is what I respect about the South Africans is they know who they are and they know how they want to play and they know how they're going to do it. And they're very good at it. And they're unbelievably good at it. Yeah. So why change? So people, that's the question. That's the more poignant question: is why should they change? They shouldn't. Until people start beating them regularly, why should they change? Yeah. Bring them into our world. That's the whole point of why you play the game. You know what? And why? Yeah. You, know, you know, last week I was saying England want to try and avoid getting into set piece. They yeah. didn't really go out and do that, and but they went with such conviction, and their defence was outstanding, and their, you know, what we talked about in the fact that they've got they've earned the most turnovers that were continued on the on the last weekend but you know if there is that grind that comes with South Africa and if you don't sort of get away from them and, and they're, they're still in the mix yeah. they, they'll come and find you and that's what they do brilliantly well this is a very this is it, what it feels like is this is not the right time to be having this conversation but unfortunately be, no. but unfortunately and I'm going to go through some of the details here this scenario between Bongi Namambi and Tom Curry means that we are going into a World Cup final talking about an extremely unsavoury incident. So 
just to give you the update, I'm sure you've read most of this already, but having considered all the available evidence, including match footage, audio and evidence from both teams, the governing body, World Rugby, has determined there is insufficient evidence at this time to proceed with charges. You know already the story. This is Tom Curry alleging that he was racially abu- abused by Bongi Namambi during the World Cup semi-final between England and South Africa. I'm continuing to read here. It's important to note that World Rugby accepts that Tom Curry made the allegations in good faith and that there is no suggestion that the allegation was deliberately false or malicious. World Rugby is also concerned by the social media abuse that both players have been subjected to this week. There is no place in rugby or society for discrimination, abuse or hate speech. And World Rugby urges fans to embrace the sport's values of respect, integrity and solidarity. It sort of uh, feels a little bit like they're shouting into the wind in that regard. The RFU have now come out, England Rugby have come out and said, uh, made a statement of their own saying, the RFU fully support Tom Curry in raising the racially abusive behaviour that he experienced whilst playing for England against South Africa. The World Rugby investigation were informed by Tom Curry that he'd also been the victim of the same abuse from the same player in the autumn test of 2022. The RFU are deeply disappointed by the decision taken by World Rugby. The decision not to put the evidence before an independent disciplinary panel has denied the disciplinary process the opportunity to hear Tom Curry's voice. In their continued full support of Tom, the RFU, together with England squad, condemn the disgusting abuse that he and his family have received on social media as a result of having had the courage to put unacceptable behaviour that has no place in society or on the rugby field into the public eye. So... (sighs) I mean, where do you start in trying to unpick that? What I would say very quickly off the back of it is that Sia Khaleesi has come out and offered his full support to Tom Curry as well. I've spoken to him. I sent him a message. He's someone I respect. We can take it as players. When it comes to you, it is fine. But when families are involved, it's different. I've let him know that we're supporting him and we're thinking of him. It's an absolute mess from start to finish. Um, it's completely and utterly the, the the one thing we don't want to be talking about going into to the, to, to the, a game of this magnitude. But where do you start in trying to unpick this? Nobody wins. Yeah, no, no one does win. What I, d- I don't agree with is how the South, and I say this about the bot fans, and obviously this is a select number it's a of minority. Fans. It's yeah. always going to be a, a minority who shout the loudest on social media. That's just the way it is. Um, but then to turn it into a joke, something as serious as this. To this then is come with a training video. To, to come out as a training video of making a joke about it as well. Yeah. I think that's really poor. You know, and this is one of the things where I talked about how great Razzy is at certain things. You know, he did the thing with Owen Farrell. By the way, you know, that was Andre Estehazen tackling yeah. higher and higher yeah. and higher. And on then a, he on took a viral he video. took Estehazen aside and taught yeah. him, to, you know, taught him to hit high, and and it was making a point and trying to use humour to make a point. But whilst that one is okay, I would say you know is a bit different. R- racism has no. We spend so much money, so much time. So much energy, about energy in raising about awareness, ra- raising awareness of racism and eliminating it from all our sports, and to then make a joke of it, I think is is completely inappropriate. I feel it should it's messed up the uh, the whether ever was going to be an independent disciplinary. It's just messed up that process of letting it just get solved. We we all need to grow up a little bit and remember yeah. it's a sport um, that players put their body and soul on the line for. And yes, we and I say this more than anyone else, in the heat of battle, things things can be said and loads of people threw banter out there. Now, I'm a, a keen, like a bit of a verbal on the pitch and everything else when it's witty and it's committed. That doesn't include anything that's semi-racial, by the way. Yeah. So to, to try and put this into a bit of banter and he couldn't take it, and I read something okay, on one of the Smutby groups this morning and it's just explaining language and this and that and, you know, he used to stop moaning. That isn't moaning. If we want to move sport forward and we want to move the human race forward in terms of all people being equal, it's the right thing to do. If he felt that it was he, that was what he w- was said to him, it's the right to yeah. notify someone and let the due process take its, take its course. I think the final thing is if this doesn't stop in some and stop soon, you sort of wonder where it's going to end up because yeah. you've got players like Tom Curry, who is a very, He's a top man. He's a stand-up guy. He puts his heart and soul into it and his family are getting the most abhorrent abuse online. Why bother? Why yeah. does Wayne Barnes bother? Why well, does Nick Berry yeah. want to continue? And yeah. then what are we left with? Yeah, well, exactly. A penny for your thoughts on the All Blacks, how they arrive in this final, the journey um, that they've been on. 
Look, I, I, you know, having looked at everything, I think the journey they've been on was, again, created by people. Um, you know, obviously, if you jump back a year or so, um, or even into the rugby championship and the pressure that was on Fo uh, Foster and, and everything. And now watching, I watched another video last night about um, what they went through and how they got behind their team and, and understanding how much loyalty this team has to that coach. Uh, you know, you could say that this is just as important a game on a, on a, than anything. You know, everyone always talks about, again, you see on social media how together South Africa are and how they're playing for each other. Well, this All Blacks team is playing for one guy and mm. that is their coach completely. You know, you've heard it from the other side, from the Springbok side in terms of what Razzie is to the team. Well, the players were, and how they spoke about on the video that I watched about everything that was going on and how they were being challenged and Foster was was taking all the blame for it. But, you know, for the players to turn around and go, that's our coach. We, we know we weren't doing the right job. Yeah. And then, you know, we know how good this team is and we know where the the journey is. There's, there's no mistake why the two teams that have won six of the nine World Cups are in another final. They just know how to get it done, their quality, and they play on different sides of the fence. You know, John Kerwin and those guys can moan about the way that South Africa do their business. Um, but I'll still go through this World Cup. The, be the best games that we've seen play were Ireland and South Africa, England and South Africa, and France and South Africa that were physical, built a lot of meat on piece. the bone everything else yes we've had brilliant games within that as well uh, with, with the New Zealand from the other side and there's been questions about Fozzie if people have to pick a side why do we ever have to pick a side about how we've got to play the game that's the part of the skill set of playing this sport is it can be done in many ways yeah and you you've got to the cake however you like and you've got well the best teams and I'll say this about you know having just uh, indulge me about 20 years ago we had a team that could do it anyway we won the Grand Slam playing, scoring a bucket load of tries, but we went to World Cup and got it done in a in a slightly boring fashion. Happy to say it. Yeah. And it, you've got to have multiple styles and multiple ways to to play the game, or you've got to have a plan to figure out how you best win each game. Yeah. And that's good. That's what is going to turn up on the weekend. It's going to, who's going to prepare the best, who's going to have the greatest understanding of how the weaknesses that the other team have and can pick them apart. Now, whilst Razzie's is quite easy to see because of a 7-1 split, the fact that <laughs> he's almost saying uh, backs are redundant and you only, need, you only need eight of them to get through 80 minutes of international test rugby. You know, now it's New Zealand's job to go, right, you know, let's stay away from set piece if we can yeah obviously the weather is going to play a big role there's a lot of talk that it's going to be rain so I think last time I checked it was like 70% there was going to be rain yeah. what happens if there's not if it's dry and New Zealand can play their style maybe the sun comes out at 9pm who knows well, who knows what that'd do but uh, I think I think New Zealand know exactly the path they're on they're playing for a cause the same as the Springboks are I just hope it's going to be a fascinating clash of cultures and clash of styles yeah and the team that plays the best will come out on top. Yeah. Now, just because of this week, I'm probably going to edge to the All Blacks because I'd just like to stick a little. By one point. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Just yeah. to return the favour. Yeah, just to return the favour. So, uh, But we'll see. Uh, look, I want it to be a great game. Um, I really like, uh, I really have enjoyed watching the All Blacks and the way they play. To put 96 on Italy and play that way. I know it, you know, it's not the same, but then the way they played against... Um, you know, to battle through against Ireland shows the battle hardened as well. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's going to be an epic clash of two teams on three World Cups each and one's going to... Hold your Mystic Mike prediction. We're going to come back to that. What I do want to do before then, as we just, sort of, I suppose, drill into some of the detail, is pick a player from each country that we think could make the difference this weekend. And this is Tommy's ones to watch, brought to you by Tommy Hilfiger. Who will be the star man? Who will earn their God, you stripes? You won't even take that jacket off now. I oh, know, I'm absolutely wedded to it. Um, I think my street cred has rocketed as a result, uh, which is hard to do. Pick us a Kiwi. Because actually there's some um, rock stars in there. Ricky Iwani. I know you've got a man crush on Will Jordan, Bowden Barrack looking for another. I'm mean, Sam Whitelock potentially looking for a third yeah. World Cup win. But pick us a Kiwi to watch who potentially may have 
a day of days? Um, well, if you go through the history of what this uh, this week's going, you, I could easily just jump straight to Sam Kane. He's had... So that would be a special story, actually, wouldn't it? I mean, yeah. we're talking about players today having to walk through the fire to get to the promised land. Yeah, and exactly. And what he's gone through having to take over from the GOAT. Uh, It'd be nice to know if you'd send a little postcard to uh, Peter Romani off the back of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, and just to Happy go Christmas. through and, and to lead... Because he's had to lead this team. He's he's had injuries and, and, he, and he's had to come back and he's always fighting for any respect because he's wearing the hallowed seven mm. All Blacks jersey that's got so much history and it's that you know you read the great things is you know a jersey's loaned to you yeah. you know, and you've got to live to the legacy of the people who've gone forward and and he's got that honour of leading this team I think with the battle it's going to be and how physical it's going to be uh, you know Ardi Salvea comes into that and so, well Sam White like everyone uh, in that forward pack will come into it but I think it's a special day for Sam Kane um, as much as I love the, you know, the Will Jordans, the Ricos, the, um, you know, Aaron Smith of this world, you know, I think it's a massive game, Sam K. Also stood by his coach, Ian Foster, when yeah. Foster's job was on the line. I know you're a big fan of that. Tell us who you think for the box might have um, a game to remember. <laughs> well, it's hard again because you, you you sort of go through a you, know, you go through the game. This was sort of frustrating last week with England and so you go through the tick boxes in your head. And obviously Manny Littlebot went off after thirty. And you're like, mm. ooh, that's a tick that they're a bit rumbled about how this game's going. But you know the subs came on quite early, and you were like, oh, if you can weather this storm while subs are coming on after, they maybe a bit fresher and everything else. And I thought we were we we just got ahead. Uh, in the tactical battle and we were doing such a good job of it but then it's pulled back I think this game could come back to midway through the second half I think Quagga Smith could play a massive role that people have talked about their uh, I can't remember what the the term is a battle points oh yes that um, yeah. that they that they uh, and his battle points are off the chart because he's influence his positive influences when he's on the field are enormous just massive so it could be the fact that if it is close and tight goes into there, it could be something like that. It could be, it, 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 well, Andre Pollard is obviously, you know, he's been given a huge nod of respect, hasn't he? Yeah. To, you know, really harsh call on Manny Lilbock for, for him to go off and not even have a spot in the 23. So it's a, it's a massive game for Andre Pollard to actually show respect to Manny Lilbock and do his job and do it well. Yeah. So I might even I might even go that. Let's not even talk about if people get injured and what. You know, we know what um, Cheslin did four years ago. We know how good he is. Uh, but I think it's going to be a tactical player that's going to come to the party. Um, so I either think it's going to... I think two games... I'm going to give you two. Cause okay. I'm, oh, can I give two? Why not? It's, okay, I'm going to go Kendall. You okay, do what you like. I'm going to go Quagga Smith and you can pick someone else. But Because I think no, no, it's no. going to go deep into this game and okay. it's going to take someone to come on and... So you're going back row uh, boys. Yeah. Sam Kane of New Zealand, Quacker Smith of South Africa are our Tommy's ones to watch. And just to let you know that Tommy's new full campaign is about celebrating the special moments with friends and family. It's almost as if they had a crystal ball, you could say, because on that note, the Barrett brothers uh, would make history by becoming the first trio of brothers to reach the finals. That is in itself remarkable. Imagine what Christmas lunch would be like with all three of them wearing World Cup winners medals. <laughs> Bowden would have two. Can, can you imagine? I mean, it's just... Which one has to do the washing up? Maybe that's a sort of a... Maybe that's a battle within a battle. But that is that is a great story. Imagine being Mr. Barrett on yeah. Saturday night. Just, yeah. Oh, who do I root for? Yeah. Or, or you, know, I, you don't. You just go, how proud am I? Uh, you just, just imagine that. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've only got one brother. Imagine playing... You know, the Burgess, the Burgess brothers are, yeah. are, are a legend in their own right as well. But to have... You know, three people take one of the fifth, three of the fifteen spots in an All Black jersey that's hard in, enough in to a get World into Cup final. in a World Cup final. Yeah. It's incredible, and well I'll, done to them. I'll have what they're having, and, uh, Mr. Barrett. If you want to freeze your sperms and stud farm, sure set that, up yeah. a stud farm. We'll set up a human stud farm. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I was going to say something, but I won't. We'll be <laughs> so Good luck to the Barrett's. Actually, good luck to Sam Whitelock as well. First man bidding to become a, a three-time a, world a, champion. A Some a brilliant stories in the final. Let's hope we are talking about the good stuff rather than the bad come full time. Um, 
One last reminder that you can shop the new collection in one of Tommy Hilfiger's stores or online. Check out the link in the bio and make sure you sign up to become a Tommy Together member to have the chance of winning a family trip for yourself and two members of your chosen family at a luxury holiday home in the UK in November. I think we could, certainly as a trio, three of us could do a little time away, I think, off the back of the Rugby World Cup. What, from each other? A little luxury <laughs> stay and um, perhaps a pamper and a massage. Uh, it's been a long eight weeks, I think yeah. it's fair to say. Right, go on then. Let's have Mystic Mike's predictions in partnership with our friends from City Index, global provider of spread betting and CFD trading. Uh, I tell you, well, let's do things that we haven't really mentioned England Argentina, actually, no. just before we get into the predictions. Farewell Ben Youngs. Courtney yep. Laws has already packed his bags. Uh, one or two others I think we'll probably be seeing in an England shirt for the last time. What do you make of the team, first of all? Um, I like the team. And we discussed this earlier. I, you know, I think it's almost a team uh, for the future. Uh, yeah. Could it be the team? Oh, obviously, there's a few farewells in there uh, with, uh, with Ben Youngs. But is it a team uh, that's going to go forward into the Six you Nations? You can see a few of them at the Six yeah. Nations start, can you? Certainly that and, pack. You know, I spe- well, and even the, you know, Henry Arundel getting a run. Um, you know, Stewart on the wing is an interesting one, giving Smith, but I assume they're going to rotate it's around true, yeah. and, and play, uh, play around with that. Uh, interesting to see how that goes. Um, but yeah, especially uh, the forward pack, as you say, uh, with Genji, uh, Theo Dan, Will Stewart, obviously Chesham's back in, at back, and then we've got the back row that is um, relatively Curry. younger. Yeah, with Under, Underhill, and Sam Underhill. Underhill coming in. Um, so yeah, I actually quite like it. And you know, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. I think uh, if I think it's going to be a, a game where whether they're allowing they're going to try and play rugby yeah. um, and try and enjoy themselves, lay everything on the line. It's the worst game in the world to get up for. Yeah. I mean, you know, we saw the lad, <laughs> so bad. We saw the lads at that lunch and then you're like, oh, so when do you fly home? And they're like, we've got a game on Friday. Game. Yeah. And you're like, oh my God, completely forgot. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so it's uh, to go off the emotional roller coaster and try and lift it back up to play and uh, you know it's a it's a big challenge for Steve and hopefully you know they're going to make this week fun yep. and they're just going to go right we've just got to go out there and enjoy ourselves um and and see where they end up and hopefully the same with with the uh with the Argentinian team because this team can play as well so and I think you know we saw that in bits against the All Blacks where they could keep ball keep possessions they made line breaks um so hopefully we just get a really entertaining game of rugby and the winner will be. Um, well, I'm going. I'm going to stick with uh, England. They obviously, they've obviously beaten them already once this tournament, and I think they will. I think they will win the win this game. Um, oh, actually, it'd be funny enough. I wonder for the first time of of Argentina got more experience in there than us. Don't know, but I'm going to go with the fact that we're going to win it as we've already beaten them this tournament. And obviously, you know, it's a tough game for Argentina to get back up for two. Um, but I think it'll be quite close. I think it'll be England by five to seven. England to finish with a flourish. And you've sort of intimated what you think is going to happen in the World Cup final. Are, are you betting this... with your head and your heart on the final uh, Mystic Mike's prediction or are you going to uh, yeah. split your vote? No, because I again, I'll give, uh, for those who think I never credit Africa, I'll give them the credit to have gone through this tournament and whichever one of these teams, because obviously they've both lost, so whichever one of these teams comes out on top, they've gone through the toughest pool stage, and then and then they've both you know, apart, New Zealand obviously got an easier game last week, but we'll still have taken a lot out of them. They look quite flat. I've got unbelievable respect for South Africa if they can go to the well again after going to the well for two weeks on the bounce and drag themselves up to beat this quality All Blacks team. I think it'd be an incredible uh, World Cup win. Probably the hardest, toughest uh, rugby World Cup win ever. Yeah. But that goes for whichever side wins it because obviously New Zealand have been through it as well. Um, Make your pick. So my pick is, I think All Blacks are just favourites. Yeah. They're edging up. But um, I am going, here they come, I can fear them already. I'm going to go the All Blacks by... Uh, it's gonna be cl- it's gonna be tight though. I think All Blacks need to have an amazing first half and build a lead, and then they- I think they'll keep it if they do. Uh, five All Blacks by five. A prediction made. With Actually, great- I think it will be a, a bit more than that, but I'm not going more. Than that. Okay, 
All Blacks by five. A prediction made with love and great respect for all things South African yeah, rugby. Uh, well, Don't uh, take it personally. The, fu- the fundamental, it's a bit of a punt. The, the fundamental is I've got no real set, but I want to see an amazing game. Yeah. And as long as I see that, I think it is going to be physical. Uh, all Blacks are going to have to stand up to that. Uh, and But I think they're creative enough to uh, come up with a plan. I still, I said to you straight after the the defeat in, at Twickenham, I feel they were planning for further down the line. Yeah, uh, just picking around. I, I can go back on stats, and they're all, all my South African fans love the stats that come out. You know, they miss, South Africa were made to miss fifty times in that match, and uh, New Zealand made three times more line break. I think they were playing around about how to how they were if they came to meet them again, how they were going to play against them. So I think they have a plan, and. But like anything against the Springboks, it's great to have a plan. Yeah. You've got you've got to get it right or or you'll lose. So um yeah, we'll see. England by five, New Zealand by five. Those are Mystic Mike's predictions for the so final well, week. Mystic Mike's predictions. We'll come on to that in a moment. Um thank you to City Index, the global provider of spread betting and CFD trading for backing Mystic Mike predictions. Whether they're back for a second series, I think is very much up for grabs because as I take you through the leaderboard, well done to Steve Smith, who is still top with two to go. Um, I'm not even sure I picked anything last It's week, not been a glorious run <laughs> for Team GBR in Mystic yeah. Mike predictions. Um, I have scrambled to 875th, which is a bit disappointing. I've yo-yoed a bit yeah, between five yeah, and I 900. Feel that, I feel that. Now, hang I, on, hang on. You're in 1,617th yeah, yeah. and Hask, I think, gave up and went home a long time ago <laughs> and is currently in 1,796. You know when sort of your YouTube just rolls on and on and yeah. on without you actually doing anything? That may well be how he's predicting, I think. Yeah, but, I think... I think I also didn't really invest in um, the understanding exactly how the game works. So you, and the fact that I, right. you know, I always it's your don't, go, don't go with the heart. Right. Never, so again, when you're doing the super right. root game, T's and never, C's go may with, apply. never go with the heart. Always go with the actual head. Yeah. Um, because the heart very rarely You had some very, very funky predictions works. early on. Yeah. And that rather put you out of, out of the game. Um, on well, the back foot is how I put on it. On the back foot. One last hurrah. We shall see. There's one other massive piece of news which has come out this week, which is obviously around the World Rugby Restructure. Uh, from 2027, the Rugby World Cup is going to have 24 teams, six pools of four, a new round of 16, a tournament window to be reduced from seven to six weeks, which I think we can all raise a glass to. Um, I actually want to come on to that in, in the mega show this uh, next week because actually we'll, we'll get into that in some detail. Some people very, very happy about it and tier two teams, Lima Sopawanga in particular yeah. has been very vociferous around the challenges that that is going to provide. So let's put a bit more effort into that on the mega show next week as we debrief on the World Cup final. So shall we leave it there? If you yeah, are f- we, We've only got five days until the pod, uh, the, the tour starts. The tour starts. Oh, nice. Is that enough time for dialysis and a new new liver? I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. If anyone could help us with that, that would be a lovely touch. If you are feeling sad that the World Cup is drawing to a close, then our World Cup after party, the Good Bad Rugby Roadshow, is uh, getting underway on Tuesday. It is a 15-night UK tour from Plymouth in the southwest to Edinburgh in Scotland. Uh, we're going to be heading to a town near you or a city near you. And if you fancy coming along for a bit of a debrief and some great t- t- tour stories from Haskintons, get your tickets now at cuffandtailor.com. And remember that our subscription podcast, The Lock-In, is available now on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Apparently we're up to £10 generated on Spotify now. So <laughs> we are flying. We are flying. So thank you very much indeed for the additional money for a sandwich from those of you who've signed up there. Hear all the stories from behind the scenes via The Lock-In. Uh, that is us done for this week. Can we just finish by saying, let's hope for a mega final uh, and and a third place playoff as well. There are some incredible servants to the game who are saying goodbye to the international scene this weekend. Let's celebrate, enjoy and send them off into the sunset with a round of applause, regardless of who you support. Let's just try and keep it nice. You know, it's it's the greatest showpiece our sport offers. Thank you, France. Thank thank you, you, France, for an amazing tournament. Yeah, Yeah. it's been a lot of fun. Um, That is it for this week's show. Enjoy it. Enjoy it, enjoy it, enjoy it. And let's hope that um, we celebrate those out on the field of battle in the appropriate manner. You know what I mean. Thank you to Continental Tires. We are back with a proper World Cup final debrief on Sunday. We shall see you then. But for now, from all of us, bye-bye. We've been described as the worst England touring side in the history of any sport. I've never played that drug before.